I thought today we'd have a quick chat about turbos, talk about my setup, talk about what things were affected at the different levels of boost I was running at. Disclaimer, this is not a technical description. This is basically from my findings, everything I came across while I was doing this, my own experiences as such. Um, before we start, I had a bit of a mishap the other day. As you can see, the bumper's off and I reversed into a post. But we won't talk about that, so don't look. It'll actually help a bit to see my setup with having the, the rear bumper off. I think first we'll talk about what you actually need to turbo the 1ZZ. Okay, one, one thing I will say is it's probably a good idea not to do what I did. I started off with a turbo kit. You don't need a kit, you're wasting your money, you're paying somebody else just to get all the bits together for you. If we have a look at mine, we'll ignore most of the bits that's on there and I'll talk about the basic requirements for the turbo kit. The first thing and the hardest thing to find is turbo manifold. Uh, you need to obviously find one with the flange that you need to match your turbo. This is a T25 flange. The turbo that's on here is a TD04. This one's been modified with a larger compressor housing and the T25 flange. The TD04 doesn't normally come with that. I don't know the technical details, the numbers, etc. But all I know is it's larger. The turbo itself, you have an oil feed. This is taken from a sandwich plate on the bottom of the filter. There's an oil return there on the bottom of the turbo which is your next hardest bit. That plums in to the top of the sump. You'll need a fitting putting on that on your sump so you can you can plumb your oil return back into. This particular turbo is a water fed turbo. So I have gone into my water line. It's plumbed in in line. I can't remember exactly why I did it that way but it seems to work. Uh, I never have any temperature problems. You can see down there from the front of the engine, which is where I took the pipe from. I just literally broke into that pipe there. Next from the turbo, the other bit that you'll need to get made up is the exhaust. Uh, this is a completely custom exhaust, but you can get a pipe made to go just from the turbo and join into the stock MR2 rear box, which is what I used to have. Now I've got a complete new system that is straight through and loud. From the turbo this way, if you're running like this one runs at the stock wastegate pressure of 5 psi, if you're running that, you won't need none of this cooling. It, it'll, it'll cope. So you can literally go straight from the turbo round into your inlet manifold. The only thing you will need is, I don't know if you can see it properly, but just there is a MAF adapter. That completely depends on which type of ECU you'll be running. If you're running a piggy bike like myself, You'll need the MAF still there, so you'll need a MAF adapter. Another thing that a lot of people forget to do is on top of the engine there, you can see that little filter. That is the crankcase breather, I believe. That goes between your throttle body and the crankcase. You don't want boost pressure on this. So what I did is I cut it down at the throttle body. You can't see it, but down at the throttle body, I blocked the hose there and this end of the hose from, from the top of the engine, I just fitted a small filter. The air filter on mine is running down there and it's just down there, if you can see it. That's just straight from the filter to the turbo. If you're running the stock ECU still with a piggyback, you still need your O2 sensors in there. Um, I've actually wired two of mine together into one, which you need to do a resistor trick on it. So the heater circuits need to be kept separate between the two, but the actual sensing side for the O2 sensors can be wired straight together and they'll read 
in parallel. Apart from that, the only thing you need is to do something with the ECU, whether it be a standalone or a piggyback, and that will get you a low boost setup. You don't need any more than that. Okay, what I'll talk about now is not something or not in a way an actual tuner would talk because I'll talk in what things affected me at the different levels of boost I was running to get where I am now. A uh, proper tuner will tell you that the boost isn't totally down to the power, it's not totally related, which is right. But what I'll do is I'll give you a rundown of different boost levels I was running and what I had to change at those boost levels. At 5 PSI, I was running no intercooler or anything it was just a straight pipe from the turbo into the throttle body stock injectors stock clutch basically everything was stock apart from i had a piggyback ecu at the time i had a greddy e managed blue they're a total waste of time really you you can't change any of the injector lag times the injector scaling is not the best. I'm now running a Greddy e Manage Ultimate. The Ultimate's a lot better. You get a lot more control over the injectors and the fueling. The reason I'm running a piggyback is because I've tuned it myself. I spent months and months logging my drives, adjusting the map to suit and getting the AFRs correct. I spent a lot of time doing it and I just wanted to do it myself really. So at least with the stock ECU in place, it's got a bit of knock protection and it just pulls back the timing before you get any serious problems in theory. So far I've not blown it up. I wouldn't recommend it. You're better off paying for a proper tuner because they won't blow your engine up. I will. And I'm not too bothered. I've got another, I've got another engine there, a spare engine. So I, if I blow it up, it's one of those things, isn't it? What I did after I was running stock pressure for a while, the spring pressure, was I increased it with a mechanical boost controller to 7 PSI. At 7 PSI, the clutch was holding still, the stock clutch. Uh, the stock injectors were completely maxed out. They, they needed to be changed for bigger ones. And the intake temperatures were rising as well. It was no good without any sort of air cooling. So I fitted some Astra VXR 470, I think the 470 cc injectors. Uh, they were modified. Thanks Stuart for your idea, I stole that. And I fitted a water to air charge cooler. After I fitted that, I realized that I could get a lot more boost because the temperatures came down uh, I started slowly increasing the boost and I found that straight after 7 PSI the clutch started slipping. I changed the clutch for an American clutch spec uh, and it should be rated to 320 pound uh, of torque. So after that I took the boost up to 10 PSI. At 10 PSI everything was alright as it is. Upgraded clutch, upgraded injectors, water to air cooling. But what I did notice was it was becoming increasingly harder to map. The, the problem is with the stock fuel pump and the stock regulator is it's not designed for boost. What happens is it's designed from when you go from vacuum to atmospheric pressure, it's supposed to increase the fuel. As you're increasing the positive pressure of boost, you're actually finding that you're reducing the fuel pressure. To overcome that, I fitted a Walboro 255 litre fuel pump and a rising rate regulator. For the amount of fueling I was doing, you don't really need it. I did it because the rising rate regulator as you go out of vacuum into positive pressure, your fuel is raising at the same rate. So for every one PSI extra of boost you're putting through, you're getting one PSI extra of fuel. So everything's raising up together. It makes it a lot easier for mapping. At that time, I lifted the boost to 12 PSI. 12 PSI on a stock 1ZZ block is probably a bit stupid, to be honest but um, it's not blown up yet. I'm still waiting. 
but it's not blown up yet. Okay, I'm not sure if I missed anything, but comment below if I did. We've got some more things coming up soon. Obviously a repair job on the pumper and I've just repaired the, the mirrors. Uh, these ones. So we'll get these back on soon. These are a lot smaller than the stock mirrors and I think they look quite nice. I don't know if you learned anything today, but hopefully it's a, a bit of information to help somebody. Just take the information as my findings and my experiences and make your own mind up. So please, if you want to see more, subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks, fixing a bumper. Ugh.